And three, two, one. I'll take you to Funky Town. Gonna take you to Good Morning. Good morning. They're singing this morning. I don't know what she's talking about. He never does. Uh, I'm confused. How was your workout? My workout was good. You know, I was a little tired today, um, but it was good. I did my cardio blitz and legs today. Okay. So, you know, can't complain. That's good. Did many, many sets of many, many exercises. That's good. And you'll find that on my journal. Yes, they will. Absolutely. Hey, Pat. Hey, nice Pat. to see you. Hope it works for you today. Yes. Um, we saw her this morning. She was saying sometimes the streaming doesn't stick around long enough. Right. Um, I did chest today. Yeah. Yeah. I am uh, struggling with it being so cold. Like it's mid March, I feel yeah. like it should be warm, and so I'm I'm struggling with it being, being cold, and I think that's being a challenge for me. How was your weekend? My weekend was awesome. You know why? I got to spend it with you. You always say the same thing. <laughs> I guess that's good. I guess that's good. Good morning, David. Nice to see you. Good morning, David. Michael. Everybody popping in. Popping Lo in. Loving it. Happy to see y'all. Y'all. What? Okay, no, it's all good. <laughs> Except if there's more than three, then it's all y'all. All y'all. All y'all. <laughs> I don't know. Y'all is about all I can do. Um, so we told you guys that we have been listening to the book, The China Study. Um, it's 15 discs long, which is by far if, the longest um, number of discs we've ever right. had a book be. If CDs could be a tome, it's a tome. Yeah, I don't know how many pages this book is, but this is a really, really long, uh, long book. Um, my shoulder has drama, David. Um, I think the issue is I'm sleeping with my arm up over my head. I think I've determined that's why my shoulder's bothering me. Right. Um, so we wanted to talk to you about this book. I do, I will be typing up my notes, although There's it's There's a good. lot of them. There's a lot of notes, I'll yeah. show you. There's this many pages of notes. They can't appreciate you that. You can't appreciate that. But, so I'll type probably them probably 20 pages of notes. Easily. Yeah. I'll type them up and uh, add them to the... Uh, notes and quotes section of the website for members so you won't have to listen to 15 CDs huffing I'm sorry I'm just thinking I did those off on a couple of the uh, <laughs> learning uh, uh, listening sessions so some of this book especially in the middle is really dense it's a lot of science um, there's a lot of science which is great and I feel like everybody should understand the science because then oh, they, we're pixelating. oh we're pixelating badly that's all right. We'll see if it gets better. I have the video going, so that I can share that one on the page later. Um, but I wanted to share a little bit about it, about what we learned. Um, one thing I thought was interesting that we came across was that in the United States, they're allowed to put low fat on a package if it's less than 30% fat. Which is just crazy. That to me is outrageous. Right. Considering you're supposed to have, uh, what, they, they recommend 10% fat in the diet? 10 ish percent fat. So if you're 20% over that, we'll still call it low fat. So um, just because in the US it says low fat, it, it may not be because less than 30% is not necessarily low fat. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's kind of scary. Um, and plants tend to be, you know, the 6 to 10% that, that we right. need. Right, exactly. So they talked about that. Um, let me see what else they have in here that I wanted to share. Did you have something that you took away that you wanted to share specifically? Well, I mean, so other than the science, and I mean, I'm already sold on this, so, so the science for me is like, yes, I get it already. I know, I got it. Yes, I agree, I agree, I agree. <laughs> you know? But what was, what was sad about this book is I'd probably say the last quarter of the book talks about... It's so depressing. It talks about why the American diet isn't better than it is. And, and the... The barriers that are preventing a whole food plant-based diet from being the standard diet in America or in Western society in general, but mostly in America, I guess, because that's what he's dealing with. Um, it's just, it, it's funny because it is the politics, it is industry, it is all the stuff, all the evil that you want to say is out there. But he, you know, at the same time, he kind of defends it in the sense that he does generally believe that most people want to do good. They're just in a system that has been set up so badly yeah. that it's hard to get around. And there's so much money involved. And there's so much money. Yeah, and, you and, you know, and then in academia, you've got the issue of you know, people's tenure and you know, people trying to... Go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish your you know, People trying to make sure that their industry, that they're getting paid for, that they're being 
recruited to, whatever, is getting the support. And so they're blocking the science from being released. Like he had, a, um, he was saying that, good morning, Kristen, it's good to see you. Morning, Kristen. Um, Dr. T. Colin Campbell was saying he had a whole section of his career where the marketing department at the Cornell University would not publish anything about what he was doing right. and wouldn't send it out to the press because the dean of, of the college didn't want that information out because the dean was being... He was in a pocket of... Uh, dairy, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think he was, he, was, he was on one of the boards of the Dairy Association or something like that. So it's just so messy. And it's funny because... Like, as I said, there's a lot of people, if you want to say blame, about the... the oh, there's plenty bad, of blame to go around. How bad a diet is. But in the end of the book, he actually puts the, the, the brunt of, Responsibility. The, of the blame on academia. Yeah. And he blames the lack of tenure in, in colleges. Mm -hmm. uh, he said when he first started and he got tenure, it was, what did he say, 65? 60, 60, 65%. I think it was 65% of uh, professors or teachers in colleges had tenure, so they were protected. In other words, they could do honest research give their honest feedback, like like show the results and not, not worry risk. about repercussion. Yep. Now that number is 35%, 30? It, yeah, it's really low So now. three quarters of the, of the uh, almost three quarters of the teach people doing this research in academia are now beholden to, beholden to mm -hmm. um, big business, you know, uh, all these different, um, you know, protectional agencies and, mm -hmm. uh, and corporations that are funding a lot of this research. And what his point was that in, in academia, you know, they've got the publisher perish. You either get funding, do science, get it published, and get notoriety for the university, or you're out. And now, because they're not tenuring people, he was saying it's really a problem. It's really a problem, yeah. So, um, and the other thing that, that, that is good about this particular book, and again, it is very science heavy, but if you're the type of person where it has, if you have any doubt about the, the validity mm -hmm. of what we talk about, mm -hmm. you should definitely pick up this book and work your way through it, however slow you have to do that to understand, because the science is there, you know? And this science has not been around since the last 10 years. A lot of this science has been around for 50, 60, 70 years. It's a long, you long know, it's, science. It's not yeah. new, it's just been um, strangled, you know? Be Silenced. Because of the money that's behind. I mean, you know, there's just not a lot of money in healthy people. You think about all the industries. Yeah, I mean, we buy food. That's it. That's it. You know, I mean, if you're not going to the doctor, if you don't need medication, you know. Um, yeah. You know, you know, then you're not buying the dairy and the, and the animal products. And, and he makes another valid point is that there's a lot of jobs that hinge on these industries. It's true. I mean, I have you a know? brother who's a veterinarian. He's a food animal vet. Right, right. You know? And so you, you can't just, you just can't. Somebody asking for it? The China uh, study. The China study. Hope and, it's shiny. And as we mentioned, it's a tome, but but we listen to the tome. Yeah. So I don't so, know what it is if you listen to it. It's um, by T, Dr. T. Colum Campbell. He's a PhD, so he's definitely a researcher. And then his son, Thomas Campbell, who's an MD and actually does a lot of, um, you know, sees patients. His son actually started the first hospital in... It's north. It's in New York. It's New York. Rochester. Rochester, maybe. Uh, I think where they're doing actually nutritional counseling. Healing, or, or in, yes. In the in the hospital. Right, right. And he talks about and, and he talks about Dr. Esselstyn in there, and and Dr. McDougal, who were very frustrated that all they were doing as doctors was treating symptoms but not curing anybody, mm -hmm. because the medical profession is not set up to cure; it's set up to treat. Um, and they both became very excited when they went to started using whole food plant-based nutrition as a way to heal people, get rid of diabetes, get rid of um, cardiovascular disease. Again. I think it's going to go in and out. But as, as you said, we are recording this on a camera as well, and Robin will post it uh, to the r, &R journey page. page. Yeah, but they were super frustrated because they started figuring out how to cure people and really help people with diet, and then their hospitals started strangling the information and wouldn't send them patients and, and wouldn't, so, right. you know, that's right. super frustrating. And, and what, what did Dr. McDougall, and his, well, the part about Dr. McDougall was talking about um, with his hospital, and his hospital was in California, originally in Hawaii, but then he moved to California. Got a different job, yeah. Right, um, where they were all excited about what he was doing until I guess they realized that he wasn't, he was taken away from the cardiology department in particular, realized that Hey, if he cures our patients, what are we going to do? We're not going to make any money. Right, exactly. And he talked about the God complex. The God, he said, yeah, very much the surgeons have a God complex. But it was very interesting. So he said these people, these cardiologists, would not send him or refer patients to them, even though technically he could 
more than likely cure them. But if their family got ill, take one guess where they were sending their family. They, they themselves and their family would go. And the thing for me is, is if surgeons know this and they know the best source of health is this plant-based diet and right. they, or lifestyle, and if they get sick or their family gets sick, they go there, but they won't refer their patients, that sounds like a lawsuit to me. Like <sighs> that just doesn't sound good. He actually said that in a book. And again, not our opinion. This is the information that's in the book. So if anybody wants to sit there and come after us, this read the book. Is, read the book. We're just we're just re, you know relaying the information that's in the China study. Oh, and he made the point, and th this for me was a, kind of a real big deal because we did this. Right. It says you can't take one animal-based food, for example, beef, and replace it with another animal-based food, say for example, chicken, right. and think it's healthier. It's not. not. And I know we we did like we ate we thought we were eating healthy before we went plant based. Right. You know we ate chicken and we ate turkey and we ate fish. Yeah. We didn't eat beef. We stayed away yeah. from red meat. Very rare occasion. But he made the point it's not different. No. So you know that's a challenge. Right. And the recommended daily allowance for protein is nine percent. Right. It's only nine percent of our diet. Right. And what do we take about thirty or thirty five percent? No, I think in the, the standard American diet is seventeen. Seventeen. Seventeen percent protein and then thirty percent fat. I, I, I mean, I think it's higher than that personally, and, and this is non-science here, but <laughs> I, just, I, just, I ask the people out there, when you eat your meal, what's on your plate? How much of it is the protein, which means dairy of any kind, such so cheese, you know, or milk of any kind, yogurt, mm -hmm, cottage mm -hmm. cheese, that's all dairy, right? Or does it have eggs of some kind if you're having breakfast? Or is there chicken, turkey, fish, or some kind of beef on your plate? And then how much of it is potatoes, rice, um, carbs. carbs of some kind, vegetables, carbs. and I, I, I'd be interested to know. I mean, I think it's probably more of the protein and less of everything else. Yeah. And if anything else, the other stuff is left on the plate. Well, they, they have said, the government, who we all know is in the, in the pocket of industry, has said that protein is um, safe up to 35% of your diet. And there is no evidence that that's the case because no. You, you know, you're, you excrete between 5 and 6% in urine. Like, that's just what your body uses. So that's what you need to, to kind of maintain. And then increasing protein very much above that is associated with disease risk, particularly if you're taking in animal protein. Exactly. And you can't, if you're eating plants, you can't really get your protein much higher than 5 or 6%. I see Sean's back. How you doing, Sean? Ah, Sean, good to see you. <laughs> well. um, and, you know, and everything we've read and everything that we've listened to in documents and all that, I keep, I, I guess, I feel like I keep harping on this, but I just, dairy. Do and not take in dairy. Drinking milk is basically mandatory in schools. Right. So, and yes, this book talks about the school system and how um, basically the Dairy Association has taken over the school systems and has made it so that it's a law. And they use it as marketing. Like, right. they and, oh, here, this is the kicker for me. They get to deduct their marketing expenses from their taxes right. and they're marketing directly to children in schools. Right. And so the interesting thing, I guess, for me is we don't allow marketing to children for a lot of things, right. but when it comes to junk food, when it comes to dairy, when it become, comes to toys, we allow that. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And the other thing is, is um, a lot of the research that we've seen has shown that if you uh, wean a child too quickly and you start giving them three, milk, less than three months, less than three months, that that's that's one of the biggest causes of type one diabetes. It's associated with type one diabetes. Right, if right. you wean a I child that, to that's to a cow's better milk. way to say it than the cause. Yeah, you can't say you cause. can't say cause. You can say see the scientists in me. Right. You can say associated with. Right. So, so if, yeah, <coughs> all your new moms out there, or people you know are new moms. Right. You know that's something to think about. So you know it's all about money, ego, power, and control. That's basically what it comes down to. And I feel like we're, we're kind of at that point in, in our culture where we're all ready to say the diet emperor has no clothes. Right. You know? Yeah, I know we're pixelating today, Sean. We have the camera running so that we can load that, the clean version to our page when we're done. Right. So you guys can listen. Yeah, it, but, it's breaking in and out, so it'll come back. But, yeah. Uh, but there'll be an unpixelated version on the R and our webpage. Later today. Later today. Yeah. So, um... The oh, and Facebook page. I said web page. Oh, Sorry. The medical schooling system is paid for by the drug industry. We know that. We've talked right. about that before. Right. Um, 
the, the, the question he asked over and over is why are doctors letting their patients suffer, spend crazy amounts of money, and almost die or die? And basically, he says that's because that's where the money is. Yeah, I mean, think about it. How much does it cost to go to medical school? Yeah. And how many doctors come out with basically loans because they, they loan mm -hmm. their way through medical school? Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to pay for that. But, you know, the yeah. bottom line is, and I, I firmly believe this, is who cares who's responsible and who cares who's to blame? Right. We now have social media access. We now have the ability as individuals to get out there and start, like, preaching this and making a difference and saving our healthcare system by being healthy. And I guess that's what we're trying to do is by spreading the truth. And the hard part is, is that people don't want to believe it. The, you know, for and, and you know, and also he mentions this in, in the book as well. Sometimes it's um, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's um, culture. Oh, yeah, a lot of it's culture. You know, so, yeah, you know, um, and, and you know, we're brought up to believe certain things. Um, you know, you, you're, you're brought up to believe that what your mom put on the table was the healthiest thing you could possibly eat, and it's hard to and grasp. our taste buds are attached to that. And our taste buds are attached to that. There's the, there's the addiction to dairy because of you know. The enzymes in the it. The enzymes mm -hmm. in it. So there's a lot of reasons why. Uh, the encouraging thing is when, when Dr. Uh, Colin, uh, T. Colin Campbell started this out, what, 60 years ago or something like that? Um, and he started out as a dairy person. He was. He, yeah, he had a dairy, like his parents had a dairy farm. Um, but there was a lot more pushback, but the word started to get out. A lot more people are understanding mm -hmm. that a whole food plant-based diet is the, the path to good health and long life. He also talked about that there was a guy named George McElwain 150 years ago who saw that meat animal products were breaking down the human system right. and suggested that diet and cancer were related. And now doctors will say, oh no, your diet has nothing to do with it. But you know, I told you guys last week, the human body has 100 trillion cells in it. A cell lives roughly 100 days. That means every day you're replacing a trillion cells. And those cells are built with the building blocks that you put in there, the food that you, in, that right. you intake. And if the best food to build those, those trillion cells a day is plant-based food. I want to eat plant-based food. Right. <laughs> like, I think that that's the right thing to do. That right. if we've known for 150 years that plant-based food is the best option, that's what we should do. And we should stop looking at individual nutrients and creating pills, potions, <coughs> lotions, and lore out of them and start comparing absolutely everything to whole food plant-based. Right. And if it can't be whole food plant-based, then I don't want to know about and, it. And that's key because that's what the USDA does is they want to break everything down into nutrients because... Nutrients are confusing. And not only that, but you can um, patent them. You can patent them. And you can also say, well, this, you know, if you're on the low-carb diet, one of the unhealthiest things you can do, by the way, right? Um, you can put a product out there that says it's low carbs, and then people buy it. Mm -hmm. If you're on a low-fat diet, then you can put something out there that says low-fat. And, and it's just its marketing ability. And it also keeps the USDA out of the hot water of all the people that are sponsoring them. The money. And that's the, you know, the dairy industry, the, the meat industry. You know, sugar. The, the sugar industry. Although they are willing to attack the sugar industry, and there must not be as much money in the sugar industry because they will pressure the, the sugar, sugar industry, industry more than yeah. anything else. Um, yeah, it's true. But you know, the thing is, you don't have to understand how it works to eat plants. You just have yeah. to eat plants, and your body knows how to take good care of you. Right. So, give your body that chance. Now, you may be saying, "But I don't even know how to start this," or "I have kids; they would never." We know people that's kids are loving it, so... Yeah, so it's just a matter of changing your paradigm, and we've talked about that before, of changing the way you think about food and, and changing about what is food. We were talking to somebody yesterday, when we told her what we don't eat, she was like, oh my goodness, what's left? What can you eat? Right. And I started listing all of the things that we eat, and it's just, there's such a wide and variety. And what did she start saying? She started saying, oh, I love those. Oh, I love those. Oh, I love those. So there's a lot of good food, and that's... That's the positive of the whole food plant-based diet that, that's, that wasn't, say, 20 or 30 years ago, mm -hmm. is now there's so many recipes and there's so many different ways to prepare plants mm -hmm. that it, it becomes really good. I mean, it's just... And you just have to learn how to use spices, I think. Spices Which are Which we key. do with meat anyway. Yes. Well, so yes. And I said that to somebody the other day. I said, the next time you eat a piece of chicken or a turkey or beef or whatever, uh, or fish, don't put any spices on it. Don't do anything like that. Just broil it and then eat it and tell me how you like it. Yeah. Because we say we like meat, but we put seasoning on it and we put A1 sauce on it and we put ketchup on a hamburger or... Thousand know, Island dressing. Or whatever. And the point is we don't actually eat meat or, or animal products the way they 
come off the animal. We turn them into play something. with them. And yeah, we turn them into something that we like. So why don't we take plants and do the same exactly. thing? Exactly. I mean, I'm not saying add mayonnaise to your plants. Don't that, add that's mayonnaise not to the your point. plants. No. Laura, we know that children don't listen. That's not the way it works. <laughs> But I do think that it's easy to make excuses, especially in today's culture, to yeah. not do this. But it's there's so much reason to do it. And right. your health depends on you and what you put in, in your body. And I, and I think that it's time we start taking responsibility for our own health and stop you know, expecting government and industry to tell us what's good for us. Because right. they're clearly not going to, because what's good for them is the money. And that's and not I, good for and us. And we are working on, when I say we, what are we working on? A, a seven-day... Um, oh, challenge. Challenge. Challenge, seven-day plant challenge, right. yeah. Right, so well, we, well, Robin probably will uh, <laughs> set out a, a meals for all seven days uh, yeah. so that somebody can just follow it and try it. And, and even even the benefit of that one seven-day challenge that you're going to feel. Right. You, you're going to be like, wow, I wonder what happens if I did, you know, 10 days or 20 days or 30 days. Right. Uh, you know. Yeah, so I'm working on that and... Um, I am working on our, our blog post for that'll go out on Wednesday. So you guys, will get, if you're on our newsletter, you'll get that on Wednesday. I'm working on that. Right. So right. if you have anything specific you'd like me to talk about or you want me to include in the seven-day challenge, uh, definitely let me know. Right. And I'll, I'll work on that for you. Yeah, if you have recipes, send them along. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess at final, this is an awesome book. It's got phenomenal information yeah. in it. Yeah. it the, the science in it is solid. I would recommend it, but it is really hard to read. Right. It's dense. Right. It, um, it's like I said, if you if you are skeptical, or if you know somebody who is skeptical, and they say, I need to see the science. This is the place This to is the it. place to start. But Absolutely. if you don't want to do that, uh, give me some time, and I'll get my notes and quotes written up, and then those right. of you who are members of our yes. website. Join our website. It's, it's uh, what? What? Go. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. It's very low cost. I'm sorry. I think I cut you off. That's all right. <laughs> Uh, it is low cost. It's just $9.95 a month, and you'll get access to all my notes and quotes so you don't have to read the tome. Right. And, and all that, all the, the, the membership and the um, donation or the uh, support page, what it's really its purpose is so that we can then go out and do free events, which we have another one coming up. And we can keep doing this. Right, and we like, can keep doing this. You guys this. can tell that we spend hours doing this. Right. And at this point, like Russ said, we're in. Yes. If we just want to do it for us, we're good. we're good. I don't need to read another book ever. I know no. how to do this. I know what I'm doing. I understand the science. I can talk the science till I'm purple. Right. But I want to continue to do it because I want to be able to help people. I want to be able to make a difference. And that's why you know we're trying to create easy ways for people to invest, get more information, right. and help us make it viable to keep doing. Exactly. exactly. So um, if you're getting value, please do like and share. Join the website. Um, like our Facebook page, let other people know, find us speaking engagements with, with industries that will actually pay us. That would be phenomenal too. That would be, yes. You know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're gold, we're gold to do anything that we can do to help make a difference and still pay the mortgage at the same time. Exactly. That's, that's what that's our important. intentions are. Right. So thank you all for being here. I know that the, uh, Facebook has been in and out pixelating. So thank you for sticking around and putting up with that. And I will post the uh, clean version to the r and journey page later today right. did you have anything you wanted to add to that you know i could probably talk about this all day long we could so, because it's uh, amazing information it is amazing and i have just so much info so many notes here but we can't keep right. these people right. for days and days no i mean i wouldn't be listening for four hours yesterday something like i think that. we finished it up in like four hours yesterday right. so right. We, i mean we put a lot of time into listening to this right. book right. so yeah uh, and again if you're just joining because i see a couple people just now popping on um, this this version has pixelated a little bit. Later on today, uh, Robin will post the um, the clean version. The clean version that we also from the camera. the camera, right. right? So, all right. So with that, okay. So with that, we will say, eat real food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have we'll a great see you day, tomorrow. Guys.